Right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Right. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this uh, industrial talk on the IoT connectivity, LoRa One or Sigfox, brought to you by the Faculty of Engineering under the Industrial Linkage Committee, and is co-organized by the IEEE Multimedia University Student Branch as well as the IEEE Malaysia Com uh, Communication Society. Vehicular Technology Society uh, joint chapter. Right. With us today, we are very lucky to have uh, Mr. Tan Han Wei, the IoT Technical Specialist, um, MIE uh, Industrial Study uh, Hi, Mr. Tan Han Wei, how are you? Hi, Professor Yusuf. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon, okay. everyone. Before right. we start, let me introduce you first to the audience. Yep. Okay. <laughs> just a little bit, sure. just a brief. Uh, I'm taking only a, a short time to introduce Mr. Tan Han Wei. Uh, is, he's an ex-product manager of uh, Artils, a subsidiary of Green Packet Berhan, who has successfully created an IoT sensor hub with his team uh, for various applications, such as the smart farming uh, smart City and others. Uh, they have collaborated with strategic partners uh, such as Alibaba Cloud and Intel and Tanahmu. And currently, he's an IoT technical specialist at uh, MIE Industrial, Sundria Berhad, serving MIE Agro Farm, a subsidiary of MIE Industrial. Uh, before we go, uh, later on, I will share the attendance list in the uh, link and comments. And if you do have any questions for Mr. Tan Hanwe later, don't forget to put it in the comments or if you're watching on YouTube, you can put it in the chat and we'll try to get the questions to Mr. Tan Hanwe to answer. So without wasting any more time, I hand over the session to Mr. Tan Hanwe. It's yours, please. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Professor Yusuf. Right. Um, thank you so much to uh, our organizer and also audience uh, who actually uh, joined us today. So uh, good afternoon. Hopefully your, you have your lunch ready. So stay safe, everyone. Right. Stay at home. Okay. For today's uh, topic, there will be, uh, um, as you can see, Laura One versus Sigfox. Okay. Um, I hope I don't uh, disappoint you for today, right? Um, okay, but anyway, this is just uh, my point of view based on my experience, okay? Right, um, special thanks to uh, Silva and also Professor Yusuf, right, to organize this. Just uh, very quickly go through uh, my last visit to uh, MMU. So it's more like uh, the topic is IoT for the smart farming. So it's two years ago, right? Very, very fast. Okay, disclaimer. This is the house rules, okay? Right. Um, just, uh, just, just to make it in advance, like uh, I'm not representing any IoT uh, connectivity uh, companies and uh, I don't bias to any parties, right? Uh, second one, which is uh, no challenge sessions of the theory in these sessions. Okay, I think uh, most of the students here, you actually, you know better than me, all right? Okay, so all these sharings are actually based on my experience and not so much from the Google or the textbook itself, okay? Right, a little bit about myself. Okay, um, I'm the technical specialist of uh, MIE, right? Um, okay, I joined, I joined last year, right? Later, I tell you a bit about the stories, right? Um, from the era of uh, IFID to IoT, right? Uh, I think more than uh, 10 to uh, 13 years of experience, right? Um, I joined various company, uh, but uh, mostly actually SME, uh, right? Okay, but unfortunately, actually my my dream is actually to join the MNC, but unfortunately I, I went for a lot of interviews like uh, big companies. <laughs> unfortunately, I I feel in the interview, but then it's okay. I think it's it's good, 
when you're joining an SME, you're actually learning uh, quite a lot, right? Okay. Um, also, the last one, which is I started with the embedded engineer, right? Until now, uh, the previous job, it was actually a, a product manager and now actually the technical specialist. Okay. So uh, I won't start from uh, zero and learn, copy and modify. This is, uh, this is one method of actually uh, learning, right? So uh, I'm not a, someone that which is very smart, so I need to learn from others. Okay. Okay, a very quick intro. I, I know a lot of you, you know about this, all right? Um, LP1, a very quick intro about this, right? It's a low power wide area network. Um, so the key features of this is actually, um, it's, it's actually power saving, okay? It can actually transmit a very uh for a very far distance right but of course there's a limitation of it okay when you're transmitting far that means you're having a, a very low bandwidth okay then another drawback which is uh you have a very limited downlink for specific uh connectivity okay uh but you're still able to do it just that there's a limited time of for it Okay. Okay. Just talk a bit uh, about the architecture here. If let's say if you are comparing LoRa One and Sigfox, okay, um, you can see on the upper screen here, right? Um, this is uh, so called. You have you own your end nodes. For example, your sensors. All right, your sensor nodes, your smoke alarm, your uh, sensor for the soil, right? Here is a base station for that, right? Okay. You need to, for LoRa one in Malaysia, you need to build it, let's say, for your own uh, to use uh, as a gateway to collect all this information and using a backhaul and send to the network server. So this part, definitely, you need to handle it by yourself, right? But of course, application server, uh, yeah, there, there are some available online, right? You can have a look. Uh, for example, for the gateway, right? Uh, yeah, there are plenty available, the correct frequencies, and also um, go through uh, uh, more on the like, certifications and all this. That is very important, right? So for the... Uh, Network server here, you can use those uh, like a uh, uh, public uh, type or right? open source or not so called open source, but then you deploy your Rora gateway, but then uh, your neighbors is actually can also share it. All right. So TTN is more like a community, but of course there's a paid version as well. All right. So chill stack uh, or utility and OBWise, those are these two are actually the, 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 the paid versions. So many people use it for, um, you are the provider, you want to provide a service to people. So, so utility or be wise or bigger skill of a uh, LoRa network, then you will need that. Okay. For Sigfox, yeah, it's actually, if you are the end user, you actually hassle-free, right? They deploy a LoRa gateway, uh, Totals in Malaysia is about 400 plus, I think 400 plus of uh, LoRa gateway around Malaysia. Okay, right? Then uh, you actually go through a Sigfox cloud, then you're using a callback, right? Features, then show it on your application server. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to the next slides. So here, showing the uh, coverage for the uh, LP1, 
right? The Laura one and also for the Sig Fox, okay? So in Malaysia, Laura one, Sig Fox are actually available, but then for Laura one, you need to deploy by yourself. Here you go, right? Um, this is actually me, right? Uh, you deploy your own LoRa gateway and uh, get the coverage. Okay, then here is actually in the Cameron Highlands, one of my ex colleague, right? So this is a uh, photo during the night time in a uh, Cameron Highland. Cool, right? So you, if you look at the uh, color, this purple color is actually trying to control uh, the growth. Uh, this is one of the partners previously. It's actually uh, named Tanamu, right? They actually are growing uh, chrysanthemums. So we work with the uh, local partners there, right? They are very, very helpful. And... Uh, This is actually to control the, the sentiments, okay? Because uh, before they actually to export to other countries, they need to make sure that uh, it's actually grow at a certain certain uh, stage. When you reach that countries, then it, it, it will look nice. Okay, so this is one of the very nice um, so-called projects in uh, Cameron Highland, right? It's, uh, it's quite good actually to work with uh, Cameron Highland because uh, in the afternoon you can have your you can have your sweet corn, you can have your jagung there, you can have your, your bow tea, right? Okay, let's uh, look at their, uh, their, their plan, their future plan, let's say for the satellite. Emirates and also for the LoRa, both also they are actually trying to make it into a, a satellite, right? Um, I think they, they actually uh, started in, in a few years back, right? But then in Malaysia, I don't think it's available now, but then that will be very soon, very soon, okay? So as long as uh, you have your LoRa devices, okay, then uh, plug in with the uh, so-called the satellite uh, uh, antenna, a small one, you can have more information from their website, okay? So basically, this kind of application is more like you just need the data for once or twice per day, okay? So uh, you gather all the information in your gateway, you store it. When you see a satellite, bam it, you just send it through. Okay, so you only get the latest information, the latest data, maybe once or twice per day. Okay, so this is how um, for uh, for the satellite, LP1 for the satellite is for non-critical, right? But the information is important. Okay, but anyhow, I think uh, USM also is trying to do all this uh, uh, for the satellite but then they are doing for the small scales. Lah. They are in a trial stage, okay? Okay, right. Uh, so we are trying to talk about the, uh, the LP1 in Malaysia, so what is actually happening in Malaysia. Uh, I don't bring in um, MPIOT for today uh, because uh, at the moment, Nothing much to compare. Maybe I, I will hope that uh, MBLT also one of the players in LP1 in Malaysia, but then they are considered under a category of uh, 3GPP. Okay. So in Malaysia, like what I mentioned, Laura One mm, operator doesn't exist in Malaysia. So you need to build your own network. Okay. Um, we hope that one day we can see someone then actually doing this for the LoRa one in Malaysia. Okay, uh, Sig for operators in Malaysia is uh, Exprante. K, 
Okay, so you can actually go to their website and check your coverage. Let's say if you're going to deploy some um, devices in uh, certain locations, you check the coverage first, right? So then you, you can see whether uh, whether you can use uh, Sigfox as your connectivity, right? So it's about, like what I mentioned, it's about 400 plus uh, Sigfox gateway in Malaysia. Okay, they are doing a very good job actually. Um, a network operators that's trying to create as much as uh, use cases as they can, right? For example, for the uh, pinning smart marking, water meter, uh, gas monitoring, which is actually deployed uh, by one of my ex colleague, uh, her name Violet, right? So they have done a very successful uh, use cases, right? Okay, here is actually trying to compare the connectivity costs. Okay, I purposely bring in the uh, M2M uh, -M as a comparison. Okay, um, because sometimes uh, if we don't have an options, uh, then we have to use M2M. Okay, even though for today's topic, it is LP1, right? But then let's say if you are doing a, a LP1, uh, definitely we choose the C4, Slora 1, or in the future, there's availables of NBIoT, then actually they are good, right? For M2M, it's more like uh, you put in a SIM card for one or two devices, that's okay. Okay, all right. So you can see that uh, for the SIM card, uh, M2M is 480 per year. Sigfox is about mm, 60 ringgit per year, right? But of course, it's actually subject to number of uh, devices or the project basis, okay? Yeah, but uh, later I will show you like um, for some of the development board, right? It actually um, already come with a Sigfox connectivity for the first year, okay? For Laura one, okay? No connectivity cost because you are the one who actually to deploy it okay you own the network you own the network but then you need to uh you need to invest on the on the gateway the hardware itself and also the network server or if you don't then you use ttn okay so um when you use a lp1 you need to decide what is your end goal what you want to achieve right so uh, in my slides all this right i'm not just uh, trying to compare but meanwhile i was trying to do like uh, a suggestions or um, a tips for that right okay for example um Farmer is actually facing an issue of a shortage of the, the manpower and problem with the low yield. Okay. So you need to do, you need to, to have uh, IoT devices or your solutions to actually um, to overcome all this, right? Understand strengths to deploy and understand the crop profiles, right? Okay. And maximize the yield with the right irrigation schedule. So this is just, just an example. Important is um, there's a problem statement and you want to achieve it. It's not because of uh, you look at this technology is cool and you want to deploy it. No, it's actually not like this, right? So there's a problem statement, okay? Okay, this is how it uh, looks like, right? Uh, in my previous company, you see even the Tunda Aim, uh, MDAC, all right? Uh, MDAC is actually the one who um, collaborates with the uh, ATUZ uh, for this uh, uh, so called uh, uh, these projects, okay? So um, you can see this, right? The, it's a smart fertigation system, okay? It's actually located at the Banting. So on and off, there's a lot of uh, uh, so-called visitors, even Madi, 
uh, UPM also came to visit because uh, with this, it's actually successfully um, so-called increased the yield by uh, 20%. This is a chili. The, the crop is actually chili, okay? And uh, reduce the manpower, okay? Because um, be before they actually have this system, they need uh, manpower to mix the fertilizer uh, between the A and B. There are two fertilizers. They cannot be pre-mixed. So every day they spend four hours to actually to mix these two fertilizers together. All right. So with this system, you can, it can actually mix by itself. Lah. Let's say if you set to a certain EC value, then it will, it will make it by itself. It will, it will just mix it until to the presets value, then you will stop, then you will do an irrigations. So it's a very, very successful um, uh, use cases, a project for the uh, Malaysia's um, so-called agriculture sectors, right? Okay. I will go to the next slides. If you are talking about the uh, power consumptions, I would say uh, both of them, they are actually about the same, okay? Because main consumption is actually come from during a sleep time uh, when your device is not sending anything, right? That is how you consume the power. If your device is planned to use a, a, a battery operated, okay? For example, you need to, uh, there are six elements here. You need to consider, right? Let's say if you are designing your own IoT devices, for example, your sending interval, whether it's critical, you can, can you send 30 minutes every 30 minutes, right? Then you need to choose a low quenchant current, like for example, MCU, your peripherals, okay? your your uh, so-called your other components that you need to look at the data ships during the sleep time or they maybe they stated concerns currents okay right so the target is actually in a micro m okay your battery types right you expected the high capacities uh, of our batteries that can last for a few years three to four years five years some even claim for 10 years okay um but all these are maybe they are just based on uh, estimations and uh, very um, optimum or very optimistic kind of uh, calculations. All right? You need to take care of your firmware, right? You need to be uh, very simple. And uh, as long as it can achieve your objective, that's it. Don't put something there which is unnecessary. All right? Okay, minimize the pull up resistor in your design. That will actually definitely reduce your current consumptions. Only the necessary components, right? Avoid those uh, features that you uh, um, rarely use. Okay, the tips is uh, here. Okay, always check your IoT devices battery lifetime. From this uh, website, you can do an estimation from there. Okay. So, um, I believe that most of you are very familiar with uh, Arduino Raspberry Pi. Okay. It's okay for POC uh, for for a uh, for few units or even some uh, device from uh, other country like France, uh, they are very, very expensive. You couldn't use all these devices to, to actually to scale up. Okay. Um, so my suggestion is you always need to redesign and to scale, to scale up. Okay. So um, these are the uh, informations to people that would like to have their project to scale up. Let's say, if you are doing for small scale, then that's okay. Uh, but definitely, we can't use Arduino, uh, Raspberry Pi as an uh, industrial product. Maybe 
uh, right now they were already available uh, industrial grade maybe i'm not too sure maybe you can check it out but then to scale it up uh, the cost is actually high aha uh -huh. so this is uh i would like to have uh, engagements with you guys because you know you go you are you guys stay at home for so long so hopefully can give some things that you all can actually uh so-called uh can use it and uh, to build it to build it using all these uh, devices so it's a uh, it's actually sponsored by uh dtds okay there are two units of uh, this Renesis starter kit. You all better screenshot this. Okay. Um, and also two units of uh, ASIP uh, S76S development board. So if you are interested or you like to have this, you all can uh, quickly uh, email to me with the uh, uh, applications. Uh, for example, uh, you want to use it for the spot farming, you want to use it for uh, asset tracking, okay? Uh, and tell me why you want to use it for, right? Okay, but then first of all, you all need to understand what is this about, okay? The Renaissance Starter Kit RL78, okay? Understand it, then quickly send me the email by today, right? S seventy six S right is a Laura uh, development board. You all can actually use it for uh, a lot of applications. Okay, uh, but then you all have need to have the uh, Laura gateway for this. Okay, uh, okay. By today, before before twelve uh, midnight today. So hopefully, I receive your email. You all can send it to me. Okay. Okay, let's say for the LoRa one itself, for the ecosystem, SafeFox and LoRa one, they all own their uh, ecosystem. Okay, um, in a in a website like a partners SigFox, right? Whoever that build this and uh, partners with the SigFox and get the certifications, you all actually can can uh, put your products. Uh, in the platform itself but then um, all this you need to understand from sigfox how this thing works right uh right for the laura one as well but then laura one is more like uh you can have you can see a lot of uh, devices inside also you can see a lot of laura devices uh, outside of uh, this uh, laura alliance uh just that there's a risk for this if these things is doesn't comply with the LoRa uh, kind of communications, then you will have a problem. There's a risk, okay? But anyhow, as long as they comply with a certain standard, I think um, it should be okay. It should be okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. One moment. So, Sigfox is actually uh, in the 2011, uh, 2018, actually, Kazana is actually invest in this company. It's, uh, Sigfox is actually from France. There are plenty of uh, hardware nodes available in the market. You can see a lot, a lot. But then they are very, very expensive okay so uh, when it's expensive you just use it for poc yeah a lot of people they, they just buy a hey, just few units okay we buy first lah. but then the end they have never thought of uh, uh, doing for the to scale up to scale up the whole things okay a uh, few thousands one piece that it if you need to have a uh, I mean, thousands of units that will be, I don't know, maybe uh, it's okay, right? So, 
So let's say we are talking about the vertical, right? Uh, you can see that uh, people use it for the smart farming, for the mobility, for the industry automation, for the utilities. So which one, L, uh, which LP one, let's say for uh, Sigfox or Laura one, uh, which actually work the best, right? Um, the most economical, right? Um, and also easily available in the market. So this one is one of the use case, like what I mentioned just now by Sigfox for the smart parking in Penang. It's a, uh, I hope that you all actually have a very good experience on this. This is a, uh, the experience is quite cool. You can just pay your parking using the apps. And uh, there's a sensor on the floor itself. Once the car uh, actually parked at this parking lot uh, in a server, they actually trying to tell, uh, let's say the city cultures, okay, this lot is actually occupied. Okay, make sure these uh, users pay within uh, uh, 10 minutes else they will just go to the particular parking lots uh, and they don't need to check every single car whether they have paid the parking or not. All right, wow, it's quite fast, but all these are uh, the conclusions here. I need to state that all these are based on my experience, okay? Uh, for me, Sigfox is uh, more like uh, iOS. Okay, uh, because the ecosystem kind of uh, is ready, matured, right? For Laura one, it's more like Android. It's also matured, just that it's uh, open, open to uh, some uh, people that would like to deploy their own network. Okay, so whether you are the iOS or the Android uh, fans. Right, but this is just based on my experience. Maybe both of uh for you, you think that uh Laura One and Silfox also enjoy. Okay. Um so we are using actually both, uh, but based on the availability and also uh the project cost, right? For a different project. Okay. Uh you may use Laura One if you're ready to have a self-maintenance network. Uh, for for the for your network and a bigger scale of project, right? Um, we have experience on that, right? Um, for example, once your uh maybe your backhaul down, uh, there's no one to actually uh go and service the went to a service to uh this uh so called the base stations, right? So that's why you have uh, some data loss, okay. Uh, this is very painful if you if your data is actually lost. Okay, so Sigfox hustle free, all right? Uh, because there there's a team uh, always stand by uh, for uh, to check all this uh, Sigfox network that which is actually down. Okay, it's more like uh, DG messages, so they they have a team for that, right? And uh, you're lucky, let's say your project is under a Sigfox coverage, right? Uh, in my opinions, don't try to bias like uh, I'm the Laura one uh, supporter. So whenever Sigfox exists, I don't even look at it. No, don't do that. Don't do that. So ask yourself, actually, which one uh, works the best for you, right? In terms of uh, cost and uh, implementations, okay? But uh, what I've shared just now, uh, remember, all this uh, hardware and connectivity is just a uh, first step. So the next will be on the analysis. Okay, so shouldn't have we shouldn't have any barriers to to have all this uh, hardware, right? Uh, it should be um, cost effective. Right, easily owned, right? Then the the main thing that will be analysis. All right. Okay, just uh, some sharing with you. 
so here are some photos uh, in uh, MIE Industrials. So you can see on the top left, uh, my superior, right, uh, Dr. Pui, a very knowledgeable guy, right, taught a lot of uh, uh, IoT design. So uh, the next to him, which is uh, Timmy, he's handling the ecosystem for the MIE Agro. Okay, then we have uh, uh, Izad here, which is holding uh, this uh, joystick for the uh, drone because we are using drone for the NVRE and also the NDVI to look at the plant health, right? And we have a very smart guy here. He joined me, uh, joined MAE and also my ex-colleague of uh, ATUZ, right? He's very smart, right? Now uh, we are implementing uh, this uh, AI for durant irrigations. This guy is uh, leading this. Okay, so you all may check out his uh, LinkedIn for this uh, irrigations uh, using AI. Okay, you can see that we are actually planting uh, our uh, durian. So MIE is actually uh, own uh, 200 acres land in uh, Rawang, right? So that is actually for durian plantations. So how this is how it looks like. This is just part of it. This is one of the zone. So we put in a sensor. We build in. We build our own uh, uh, device using a LoRa. Then we do a lot of analysis. This is just one of the example. The wet and the dry. We need to determine this, right? So when should we irrigate? Uh, when should we stop? Okay. This is just a very first step. Okay, there are there are more detail. I hope hopefully there there's a chance. Let's say if we can have more sharing on uh, data analysis. So example, uh, these are my photos, right? The big boss from a green packet, CC point, right? We have a uh, collaborations with the Intel. Uh, we participate in uh five G events, right? And also we won a, a, uh, this uh, hardware battle in Malaysia. I think uh, it's a 2018, if, if not mistaken. Okay. So like what I mentioned, a uh, project with the uh, MDAC. So we actually managed to, to improve the yield. This project is actually at uh, Banting Kelumengkuang and uh, a collaborations with uh, Alibaba Cloud as well. Um, with this, it's actually quite lucky. We actually have a partners that actually can, uh, uh, I would say, um, bring us to the platform, bring us to the stage, I would say. Um, here, you can see on the top right corner, which is a photos that I got invited to Hong Kong to, um, to attend their IPO event, right? I think uh, it's, it's quite a lucky one. Okay, so with this, I think in, for smart farming, it's quite successfully in other countries, right? They are very mature, but then they are using it for their crops like blueberry, strawberry. But then we need to do something for our, our country, shine for our country, right? Uh, so this is one thing, chili and also for the durian, right? Okay, uh, next. So it's just a few words, right? You must actually uh, do, this is uh, some advice to uh, students maybe, right? Uh, must dare to dream, right? Uh, just do it. Don't think too much, okay? Participate in the events and uh, pitching sessions. Grab the chance, right? 
So whenever uh, Professor Yusuf or Siva is actually asked for pitching sessions, just grab the chance. Say, I want to do it. So you need to increase your uh, so-called your confidence, right? And uh, so-called to explore with a different kind of uh, um, so-called exposure, right? Always keep a good contact. You don't know. One day, maybe uh, they are your, I mean, your good mentor in the future, right? So read books to get the sense of uh, inspirations. So you need to inspire by, by somebody so that you can work harder, right? Uh, hopefully, all of you actually have the LinkedIn right now. So I would say LinkedIn is something that uh, it's your resume. It's your resume. Uh, a lot of headhunters, they actually hunt people from uh, LinkedIn, especially now, sir like uh, MCO, they need to, to view through what you have done. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. Need to, you need to have a LinkedIn account. Okay? Uh, take part in uh, things like hackathon, right? Don't, don't worry about, I mean, uh, the filler. I would say you're going to learn something for every single step that you actually went through. Oh, again, again, there's uh, <laughs> someone actually uh, told me yesterday. They have this, right? Uh, I I was uh, I was told by yesterday. Uh, I told them that I'm attending this event. They say, okay, you attending this event, right? You take these two units, right? As a dog gift, uh, as a dog gift, two units. There are so many students here. You say as dog gift, right? Cannot be right. So, this they told me that this device is actually oh connectivity, yeah. It supports Sigfox, support LoRa. Oh, okay, and also satellite in the future. Wow. One stone Q two birds, yeah. Okay, so it's actually support both. Of course, of course, one at a time, la, you cannot have both together, right? Okay, you cannot have two girlfriends at the same time, am I right? So you need to have only one. You choose one only, okay? Sigfox or Laura as for now, okay? Okay, just kidding, eh? So we hope that actually more devices like this uh, can support Sigfox and LoRa. So one day, if you if you don't want this girlfriend, you can have another girlfriend, all right? So else you will be like those devices that support only once, right? Then there's your, there's your wife. Lah, huh? So uh, to get this, there are two units actually. Same thing, you. But then you you don't write to me this time. Uh, <laughs> you you need to tell Alex, right from Legatech, right? Why do you need this uh, Legatech sensor notes and also your applications, your problem statements, your connectivity? Okay, tell you tell him which uh, girlfriend you would like to have. Okay, uh, this uh, sensor note, I believe. Uh, yeah, there's no development needed because it's, uh, it's a product, okay? Uh, remember to write your full name, your address, your IC number, and contact, okay? So only two winners for this. So we are reserve one unit for MMU or oh, one unit to open for public, okay? All right. Also, same thing before 12 today, and you will get notified before the 31st of uh, August. Okay, you better screenshot this, ah. Uh. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, I think uh, it's about end of uh, this uh, so-called sharing. Okay, it's more like a Santa Claus, you know, a lot so much of uh, 
this uh, gift actually uh, price to take away. Okay, so if you would like to add me, this is my LinkedIn, right? Is there any questions uh, from the ground? Okay, Professor Yusuf. So now it's in our <laughs> session. Thank you, Mr. Anwe. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that was a big surprise, uh, two big surprises in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't announce that earlier. So mm. whoever stick around uh, throughout mm. your talk will know that you have like two giveaways, actually four yeah. sets of giveaways. Eh? <laughs> uh, so they don't have to screenshot, actually. They have uh, they can view again the YouTube uh, or the Facebook. Uh, ah, I see, I see. So, yeah. <laughs> So whoever got it first, then they can go back uh, and watch it earlier. There are a few questions. I think we can mm. take a few questions for you. Um, okay. The first one, let me show you the questions by mm. Mr. Yeo Chun Yao. Uh, he's from mm. Telecom R&D. What mm. is the SLA for Sigfox? Mr. Yeo. Hi, Mr. Yeo. Mr. Yeo, I think I, I met you before, right? We work very closely last time. Okay, Mr. Yo, uh, for the Sigfox, I think for the SLA, you better uh, check with them because uh, I didn't go through much on their detail. As I know that uh, they are very responsive, once you uh, notify them there's uh, issues, I think they, they will solve within uh, a day or hours. They have a team for that. Okay. Um, sorry if I couldn't answer much on this because uh, I didn't go through in a very, very detail, Mr. Yo. Okay. Uh, uh, thank mm. you. I think that's the first question. Mm -hmm. um, there is a query from uh, Inchek Shari Nizam. Is it possible to get your slides? Uh, yes, definitely. Definitely. You just... Uh, I think which which is the best channel. Ah, you can just add me in the LinkedIn, then uh, maybe we can contact through there. Right? Okay, just get, yeah, that's easier. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, next question is from uh, Ming Ying, uh, Lim Ming Ying. Uh, what is the question uh, current? What is what is Coinsense current? Uh, it's it's a current that um, during a sleep time, for example you are not using it, but you power it, all right? So there's so-called uh, concerns current. If I am answer it correctly, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, right? Because a lot of professor, a lot of doctor here. So, <laughs> so as I understand, it's uh, something that which is uh, a device, let's say your, your chipsets, you can always, uh, uh, you can go to Google and uh, just look at one of the chipset, for example, um, maybe an analog to a digital or digital to analog kind of a chipset. And you just read the data sheet. What is the Quensen's currents? Quensen's currents. So uh, you mentioned, let's say, uh, as in uh, 10 micro amp. That means if you are not using these chipsets, how much is consumed? For IoT devices, most of the uh, so-called the current is actually due to a constant current. For example, your application is for smart farming. You only need the data every 30 minutes, all right? So what happened to this 30 minutes? It cannot be zero, right? The current cannot be zero. It must be something to, to become, a, I mean, a, to have a standby mode for that. So there's so-called a constant current. You can always check in a data sheets. Okay, next question. Oh. Yeah, all right, uh, let me check on the next question. Um, from Irufan. Irufan, mm. currently he's implementing LoRa in uh, his FYP. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the furthest range you usually achieve? Mm. Good questions. Um, we actually try, we try implement uh, a LoRa one in uh, Indonesia. So it's actually, uh, we deployed it, okay? We can achieve the line of sight of 35 km. But then don't take this as a standard. This is just uh, 
uh, very maximum, right? Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. It's actually at the borderline. To be safe, to be safe, I always use 2KM as a reference, okay? 2KM, 2KM as a reference, okay? So meanings, right? Uh, 2KM as a radius is a, is a 4KM of diameter. Okay, I, I'm going to show you something. Okay, um, here. So always do your survey after you implement your um, LoRa gateway. This is one of the example in uh, Cameron Highland. So uh, the LoRa gateway is here. So with this LoRa gateway, you just drive your car with a GPS signal. You drive, then you get a signal strength, right? All the way you can capture what is the signal strength at uh, this area. But must be very careful because uh, in Camilla Highland, uh, there are a lot of valley, right? So you need to be, you need to take notes on uh, valley side. You know, sometimes it's uh, very vague at the bottom. Okay, because uh, I know for RF, right? You'll be, you looks like uh, the signal strength is look like an, an ice, okay? Like this. So you can have a look. Okay, so uh, hope I answer his questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is one, I'm not so sure what the question is. Uh, Amiro okay. Ashraf was putting IP12. Um, I don't understand IP12. <laughs> uh, it's an incomplete right. question. Uh, yeah, but yeah. okay, we'll go to the next one. This is probably the last one uh, by Dr. Siva Priya. Are mm -hmm. there opportunities for industrial based FYP collaboration with MIE Industrial? Yeah, definitely. Please write an email to us. Definitely. Yeah, so we, we have uh, collaborations with a few um, projects with uh, uh, UTM. So we are open for that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we uh, we can contact you through your LinkedIn, um, the one that you shared earlier. Yes. Yes. That's yes, probably yes. the best way. Um, yeah. No problem. Okay. All right. So, so I hope today very very fruitful kind of sharing. Any any questions? I think that's yes. about it. The questions from uh, YouTube, your uh, from our Facebook. I think that's the the only questions that we have. For mm -hmm. today, but I think if they have any further questions, uh, I'm sure they can contact you directly. So yes. thank you so yes. much for thank this session. So much. Thank way. you so much. And also hope that uh, there are more sharing sessions that uh, in the future, right? It's not just about Laura versus Sigfox, like what I mentioned. This is just a very first step. So something that we want to achieve is actually we are still very lag from behind. Right. Okay. Thank you, Inche Yusuf. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for yeah, uh, yeah. attending this session. Uh, with that, uh, hopefully, you uh, everybody will um, fill up the attendance list. There are two attendance lists given. Uh, there is one attendance list for the uh, MMU undergraduate and postgraduate students, and there is also the E. Uh, the link to e-certificate. So if you want to get an e-certificate from IEEE Communication Society, please fill up the attendance list as given in all uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook as well. In YouTube, is actually in the description area. So with that, uh, don't forget to like and also subscribe to IEEE Communication Society uh, chapters, uh, Facebook and YouTube for any future events. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe and have a good day. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.